quasi and logical, keen, calculating, perspicacious, acute and astute. I was all of these. My brain was as powerful as a dynamo, as precise as a chemist's scales, as penetrating as a scalpel. And think of it, I was only 18. money to buy Honda Beat rather than buying those stupid books. People are actually riding Honda Beat. All the big men on campus is one of it. Where have you been? In the library. I got to have a Honda Beat. I got to. I will do anything for a Honda Beat. Anything? Yes, anything. What do you want in return? Hmm. Your girl. Poly SP? Yeah, her. No way. Race or poly? Poly? Okay, I'll just give it to someone who needs it more than you. Or I will sell it to someone who wants to join those big men. No. I'm not in love with poly. We are not even in a relationship. Uh, we are just having fun. That's it. We're casual. So give me the key and you'll have Polly. Deal? You're easy to talk with. Deal. I had my first date with Polly the following day. This was in the nature of serving. I wanted to find out just how much work I had to get through her mind up to the standard I required. I took her first to lunch. Then I took her to the movie. And then I took her home. By the way, how was the lunch yesterday? It was a delicious lunch. And the view? That was a marvelous view. Paul, today we are going to know a talk. Oh, Terry! So, what are we going to talk about? Logic. Magnif! It's the science of thinking. Before we can think we're we must first learn to recognize the common fallacies of logic. This we will take up today. Wow, though! First, let us examine the fallacy called dicto simpliciter. By all means. Dicto simpliciter means an argument based on unqualified generalization. For example, exercise is good. Therefore, everyone should exercise. I agree. I mean, exercise is wonderful. I mean, it builds the body and everything. For instance, if you have a heart disease, exercise is bad, not good. Therefore, exercise is bad, not good. Most people are told by the doctors not to exercise. You must qualify the generalization. You must say exercise is usually good or good for most people. Otherwise, you have committed the intersemester. Do you see? No, but this is Marvy. Do more, do more. Holy, it's a fallacy. The generalization is reached too hastily. There are too few instances to support such conclusion. No more any fallacies? This is more fun than dancing, even. Next comes post hoc. Listen carefully. Let's not take Bill on our picnic. Every time we take it up with us, it rains. I know somebody just like that. A girl back home, Viola Becker. Her name is. It never fails. Every single time, we take her on a picnic. Polly! It's a fallacy. Viola Becker doesn't cost the rain. She has no connection with the rain. You are guilty of post song if you blame Viola Becker. I'll never do it again. Are you mad at me? No, Polly, I'm not mad. Then tell me some more fallacies. Alright, 
let's try contradictory premises. Yes, let's! Here's an example of contradictory premises. If God can do anything, can He make the stone so heavy that He won't be able to lift it? Of course! But He can do anything. He can lift the stone. Yeah, well then, I guess He can't make the stone. But He can't do anything. I'm all confused. Of course you are. Because when the premises of an argument contradict with each other, there can be no argument. If there is an irresistible force, there can be no immovable object. If there is an immovable object, there can be no irresistible force. Get it? Tell me more of this skin stuff. I think we better call it a day. I'll take you home now and we'll have another session. Our first policy today is called Ad Misericordia. Listen closely. A man applies for a job. When the boss asks him what his qualifications are, he said he has a wife and six children at home. The wife is a helpless cripple. The children have nothing to eat. No clothes to wear, no shoes in their feet. There are no beds in the house, no coat in the cellar, and winter's coming. Oh, this is awful. Awful. Yes, it's awful, but it's no argument. The man never answered the boss's question about his qualifications. Instead, he appealed to the boss's sympathy. He committed the policy of obvious order. Do you understand? Have you got a handkerchief? Next, we'll discuss false analogy. Here is an example. Students should be allowed to look at their textbooks during examination. After all, surgeons have x-rays to guide them during a, tri a trial. Carpenters have blueprints to guide them when they are building a house. Why, then, shouldn't students be allowed to look at their textbooks during exams? There now is the most marvy idea I've heard in years. Holly, the argument is all wrong. Doctors, lawyers, and carpenters are taking a test to see how much they have learned. But students are. The situations are altogether different, and you can't make an analogy between them. I still think it's a good idea. Next, we'll try hypothesis contrary to fact. Sounds yummy! Listen, if Madame Curie had not happened to leave a photographic plate in a drawer with a chunk of pitch blend, the world today would not know about radio. True, true! Did you see the movie? Oh, it just knocked me out. That water pigeon is so dreamy. I mean, he fractures me. If you can't forget Mr. Pigeon for a moment, I would like to point out that the statement is a fallacy. Maybe Madame Curie would have discovered radium at some later date. Maybe somebody else would have discovered it. Maybe any number of things would have happened. You can't start with a hypothesis that is not true and then draw any supportable conclusions from it. They owned to put Walter Pigeon in more pictures. I hardly ever see him anymore. So do you owe me something, don't you, my dear? If I hadn't come along, you never would have learned about fallacy. Hypothesis contrary to fact. Polly, you mustn't take all these things so literally. I mean, this is just classroom stuff. You know that the things you learn in school don't have anything to do with life. Dicto simpliciter. Will you or will you not go steadily? I will not. Definitely not. Why not? Because this afternoon I promised Betty Bells that I would go steadily. Rat. You can't go home with him, Polly. He's a liar. He's a cheat. He's a rat. Polly's a little bit. And stop shouting. I think shouting must be a fallacy too. Alright. You are a logician. Let's look at this thing logically. How could you choose Betty Bells over me? Look at me. I'm a brilliant student. A tremendous, a tremendous intellectual. A man with an assured future. Look at Betty. A nuthead. A jitterbug. A guy who never know where his next meal is coming from. Can you give me one logical reason why you should go steady with Petty Bellow? I certainly can. He's got a Honda Beat. It's the motherfucking Eagle Double G. Snoop Dogg! You know what happened with the D. Sama, 
Ang hanap ko noon I should have known I should have known I should have known Wait, wait, wait Sa tapang Ikaw No way. Sounds yummy. Sounds yummy. Sounds yummy. Sounds yummy. Oi, come on, let's go to the bottom. One, two, three, go. You only not go. Nagkabuang naman ka. Sige, sige, sige. One, two, three, go! Kakitawa kasi yung pansayang. Oh my God! Yes! Who's that for? I'm all confused. Oh, they can't. I can't say we couldn't. I should have paid my money to buy Honda Beat. Sina Beat, sina Rob. Niyo iya ko ati sa wakal lang. Oh, and makita si. Oh, oh, chop. Okay, na na yon ra, okay na dito sa likod. Diri yung taka o likod na pisan. Pakita ng kamut, pakita ng kamut. Good loopers. Sige 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 sige. Ayaw. Ida ko wala. Go. Ayan! Ayan! Pan-gong! Ayan! 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 Ay